hello, what's going on? It is me, Jay Renard, and I'm here with yet another video about some Stingray. So the first video, uh, technically first two videos that I did was mostly about um, the cutting and the shaping of the Stingray, what all was necessary, let me move that mic, what all is necessary uh, to work with it and make sure everything is done as efficiently and as effectively as possible. Um, long story short, you're going to need some metal shears and uh, a Dremel. Uh, truthfully, I think um, spindle sanding machines or flatbed sanding machines, anything like that, are a little bit too large, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about uh, the stitching with the Stingray. Uh, as I said before, all these calcium nodules here on the Stingray they are notoriously difficult to uh, to work with because of the nature of, of their properties. And uh, that also conveys into the stitching as well. It can be done, it can be sewn through with a, a regular sewing machine, or excuse me, a, a regular mach sewing machine for leather. But one thing that... Um, needs to be taken into consideration is that these calcium nodules when they break uh, uh when they break from the needle on the stitching on the sewing machine or the needle or the uh the tines from the uh, the stitching chisels let me get that in focus there they are going to be sharp because they are breaking through, again, little bone nodules. And I found this out the hard way on one of the stitch, uh, one of the projects that I had with, uh, that I was working with for uh, a long wallet. Made everything, everything worked out smoothly. I went to go stitch and the needle went through just fine, but it broke a few of the nodules and it shredded completely shredded the thread and after about 30 minutes of taking the taking the, uh, the stitches out and redoing it and going over and over and over again and I actually broke two needles in the process or rather I damaged the needles and they didn't work as well I had to hand stitch the entire thing now keep in mind that that's the first time that's happened I've worked with Singray, Singray quite a bit especially on that machine however that's the nature of these nodules sometimes and um, one of the comments on the working with stingray video asked if I could talk about the stitching and I actually had a few videos on tap and I kind of procrastinated a bit uh, on getting that made so this is me making up for that I'd like to publicly apologize now for taking so long so, when it comes to stitching with a stingray, if you're going to hand stitch, best bet, especially because, like I said, sometimes breaking through these makes the uh, makes the the edges sharp. Your best bet is not to use something uh, very fine or, or with a small stitch, small stitching space like this here. You're going to have to use thinner thread. And they'll, they'll be spaced closer together. The likelihood that you stitch through and break these nodules and potentially shred up your thread is increased when the stitching, when the stitch spacing is this small. These here are size three Sewas. Let me make sure that that's not upside down. So this here is what you'll get stitching with the size 3 on the Sewas. While that would look nice on the Stingray, you're going to run a likelihood of, of, like I said, really scratching and chewing up that thread. Uh, also, if you're using a machine, and I'll choose one of these larger ones here, it's less likely that the needle will go through any of these nodules what will happen is it will 
hit a nodule and then deviate to one side or the other because these are really smooth it's not going to hit and then go go into it it'll hit a nodule then move slightly to the side like so so you'll have a what should be a straight line but a lot of slight deviations and it'll look like your machine stitch is really inconsistent and ragged if you're going to sew stingray on a machine you're better off using something where the nodules are significantly smaller as compared here if I stitched on the machine with this it would look really really ragged or really I wouldn't say ragged really inconsistent it would look very unprofessional if I stitch with the machine on this less likelihood of the uh, the needle deviating much and the stitch would be much cleaner so for those who have the machine with stingray and you don't have something that's super powerful believe me I don't have a very powerful machine it's it's great but it's not a, it's not industrial we'll say that stitching on something with larger nodules actually I should have used this this is a much better example this is not ideal for the machine not at all the previous previous one there is focus there there we go so <clears throat> so the the number three say was great on cowhide and elephant great on a lot of things stingray not so much uh, if you have uh, the stingray on something very utilitarian um, nope wrong word if you are using the stingray on something that is uh, that's for utility there we go like maybe a belt or a knife sheath or a holster um, maybe something for your leatherman I know that I have a, a pouch that I made for that something with a higher stitch spacing like these uh, I like my say was come on focus there we go so these are say number five And this is a six for something uh, of of those types, of those manners. The larger stitch spacing is just fine. Truthfully, you don't really need a very high uh, stitch spacing with uh, with with things like belts and whatnot. They're not necessarily. I wouldn't call them. Uh, uh, things I wouldn't say that they they need to have very fine stitching. They need to have great stitching, but they don't need to have fine stitching. Uh, for like for instance, the watch band. But for things like wallets, um, if you're going to hand stitch, I'd say four or the equivalent of a four. This is actually a Tandy tool with with uh, replaceable tips. And this is the equivalent of a of what a say what four would be here. Uh, four or five is I would say ideal for stingray. Looks really good. Um, the stitch spacing isn't too large. It does show that hand stitch feel. Although you you are going to have to use a larger thread. For something with a very high stitch per inch count so the the distance of the tines is very small again like the uh, the say with threes here using a thin thread is very very possible very very useful so this is the fila chinois and it's not a very thin thread 
However, with a high stitch spacing, this will stand out and it'll seem, it'll, it, it falls into uh, what I would say is appropriate uh, size for the stitching. If you're going to use uh, something with a larger stitch spacing, like the, uh, the Sable Fives or something that's the equivalent of the four here, you are going to have to use a larger thread. So this is the Ritza Tiger Thread uh, 1 mil. Let me double check to make sure that I'm not lying to you. I, I lied to you. This is the 0.8 mil. So with the 0.8 mil, it, that would be something more appropriate for a, a different stitch spacing. Uh, largely because the, the holes that are going to be created are going to be much larger. So if you used this tool to make uh, the, the stitching holes for this thread, it would fit perfectly. If you use this tool for this thread, you would have a terrible looking stitch. Even though the stitch would work, it wouldn't come out. It would look terrible. But if you used this tool, it would make significantly smaller holes and you could use a thinner thread and everything is just fine. So, so regarding the the the, uh, the stitching with the, with the stingray, if you have a machine, one make sure that it does have the horsepower to go through not just leather but you know several layers of leather easily because again this is you know these are calcium you know nodules or bone bumps you're gonna need a little bit more force and please make sure that you you are, you are using something with smaller nodules to avoid a uh, a jagged looking stitch that's if you're using the machine if you're using the stitching chisels you don't have to worry about the uh, the stitch stitch line going off to one side or the other it's just going to go down through where you put it however it is going to break through those nodules and if you use thread that is too thin it is going to chew it up a little bit so that's why I don't recommend a high stitch per inch that you would get from something like this or even smaller I recommend the four maybe the five and you'll you'll have a significantly better looking stitch uh, you might be able to get away with using a higher stitch per inch on something if you're going to hand stitch uh, if you're going to use something with the smaller smaller nodules I would say um, be a little more conservative in that in that regard if it ain't broke don't fix it this is gambling a bit in my opinion this this is not a gamble this is a sure thing this is a little large for something that would be a small card wallet it looks something similar to that right there obviously larger um, this you might be able to get to use something like this for a taller wallet something that would look more similar to that there but again for something wallet sized I say uh, the, the size 4 is the is the the money stitch that's the one that's gonna get you something that looks good and will make holes big enough that you won't chew up the thread you'll have more options for what you uh, what you can use and like I said this is a uh, 0.8 mil thread but I do have some 1 mil thread that I have used with stingray that works just fine in the the, the holes that these tools make so thank you for letting me ramble it's been about 15 minutes um, hopefully whoever is watching this and is doing some work with stingray this benefited them in some sort of way I wish you all the best of luck thank you for tuning in I appreciate it and I'm Jay Renard I'm out peace